JBN, we keep you informed. Vibes Cartel Appeal verdict set for Friday, April 3rd. Legions of Gaza fans are anxiously awaiting the verdict of the Court of Appeal judges who will announce the fate of dancehall star Adija Vibes Cartel Palmer and his three murder co-convicts on Friday. The verdict is to be delivered tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Attorney Tom Tavares Finson, who led Palmer's defense team at the trial, said, It's expected to be streamed online. I have no idea what the verdict will be, but what I will say is that it has taken almost 10 years for Vibes Cartel to get justice, and people wonder why people say the justice system is broken, Tavares Finson said. The Court of Appeal last December had indicated that a ruling would be handed down in short order. In the meantime, Cartel, also known as World Boss, continues to churn out hits despite being locked up since 2011. Jamaica's COVID-19 cases up by 3, now 47. Jamaica has three more confirmed COVID-19 cases, pushing the country's tally to 47. The Health and Wellness Ministry reports that of the five pending test results from yesterday, two samples have tested negative while three are positive. The new cases are a couple from St. Elizabeth with a travel history from New York with a female aged 79 and the male 73 years old. A 32-year-old male from Portland with no travel history. His mode of transmission is under investigation. The ministry says there are now 27 imported cases, 17 import-related and the three are under investigation. It says Jamaica has tested a total of 476 samples including those tested for severe acute respiratory infections. Of the 476 samples, three results are pending, while 47 samples were positive and 426 were negative. 10 charged for breaching COVID-19 curfew. The police are reporting the arrest of 10 people for purported breaches of the nightly curfew imposed by the government in response to the outbreak of COVID-19. The curfew, which began last night, will run nightly from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. and will end on April 8 at 6 a.m. The 10 people were charged with breaches of the Disaster Risk Management Enforcement Measures No. 2, Amendment No. 2, Order 2020. Among the individuals is 37-year-old Dane Mitchell of Pencil Street, Kingston, who was seen yesterday in a viral social media video stating his refusal to comply with the curfew order. The others charged are Maurice Dunham of Whitehall, Westmoreland, Cecilia Palmer of Sandy Bay, Hanover, O'Keeve McIntosh of Central, Lucy, Hanover, Shane Thompson of Prosper Road, Lucy, Hanover, Elvis Jones of Sandy Bay, Hanover, Ryan McCoy of Mount Peace, Hanover, Denton McIntosh of Malcolm Heights, Lucy, Hanover, Jordan Fletcher of Rejoin, Hanover, and Elvis Clark of Kingsville, Hanover. The police also said scores of people were warned for prosecution and cooperated, and no homeless individuals were arrested anywhere in the country. This is contrary to a press release from Minister of Local Government and Community Development Desmond McKenzie stating that several homeless people were arrested on the streets of the corporate area during curfew hours last night. The minister apologized and announced that a 100-bed overnight shelter is being provided to accommodate the homeless during the nightly curfew. Meanwhile, the police are reminding the public to comply with the nightly all island curfew and warned that failure to comply may put others at risk of contracting the coronavirus and can result in actions taken against a non compliant individual. Jamaican bartender in Barbados is first to breach curfew order there. A Jamaican national was remanded in police custody in Barbados after breaching the island's nightly curfew that has been imposed to stem the spread of the coronavirus COVID-19. Christine Bridget Beacon, a 23-year-old bartender of no fixed address, was the first person on the Caribbean island to be charged with breaking the curfew, according to media reports there. She pleaded guilty to the charge when she appeared in court on the island on Wednesday and was remanded for sentencing on April 29. 
The allegations were that on Monday, March 30, Beacon was found along Government Hill, St. Michael, at about 9.30 p.m. without reasonable explanation for her presence on the streets. She was subsequently arrested and charged. Last Thursday, Barbadian Prime Minister Maya Motley announced that her government intended to impose a curfew as the number of coronavirus cases continued to rise. The curfew, which got started on Saturday, March 28, is to run from 8 p.m. to 6 a.m. until Tuesday, April 14. Motley had announced, too, that critical government departments in Barbados will be allowed to be opened from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., and the central services will continue to be in operation. Up to March 31, Barbados had recorded 34 cases of COVID-19. More females falling victims of gang war. More women are losing their lives amid gang violence as brutal gang bangers turn their guns on innocents, murdered only because they are related or just linked to the enemies who criminals are finding it hard to catch. Gang-related killings of women moved from a low of 11 in 2014 to a high of 58 murders in 2017 before trending down to 28 in the year 2018. The murders of women are particularly high in war-torn gritty communities in St. Catherine, St. James, and Clarendon. In the St. James Police Division, there were 95 murders of women between the years 2014 to 2018, while in Clarendon, there were 67 murders recorded over the same period. The more dangerous police divisions for women over the same period included St. Catherine North with 66 murders, Westmoreland with 55, and Hanover with 37 deaths. Police investigators say the whole dynamic of gangs has changed dramatically over the last two decades, and there is no longer a pecking order or leadership that holds its members accountable for crossing the line as large gangs are fractured into smaller factions without clearly defined leaders. Young members can now go out on their own and do what they want with very little ramifications within their group, an experienced cop said. It's war, and all is fear and war, the crime fighter said. There are no rules. The potential to do something like that always existed, where if two gang members are having a conflict, they take it out on someone near and dear. Remember, they have killed several fathers dropping off their kids at school. Women, grandmothers, and kids are just collateral damage. Remember the murders in Logwood a few years ago, stated the officer. Six members of one family were killed in Logwood, one of the most populous feeder communities to Green Island in Hanover in October 2015. The house where the killings were done was torched after the attack. The deceased included two teenagers, a woman, and a 62-year-old man. The bodies were found in the rubble of the burnt house. Four of the occupants of the home were treated for burns. Two men, who were charged with the murder of the six family members, were given life sentences in the home circuit court in December 2018. The convicts are 27-year-old Mikhail Campbell, otherwise called Troy, a bike taxi operator of Green Island, Hanover, and then 51-year-old Earl Clark, otherwise called Scorcher, a construction work of Mountainside in the parish. Investigators linked the massacre to the island's international lottery scam crime rings. Everyone is considered fair game for many of them. There is no such thing as a little kid in their minds, the crime fighter said. One troubling statistic is the category dubbed not yet established, where no motive had been unearthed for the murder. This category ranked up a total of 314 women who were killed as a result of predatory males or random acts of homicide that seemed to defy explanation. Women and children have become another victim in what police investigators call a culture of you can't catch Quaco, you catch him shot. Killings across the island in which gunmen turn their weapons on anyone related to their enemies. At one time, it was not commonly seen in a street gang warfare largely because when women and other unaffiliated family members are intentionally targeted, the unspoken rules of combat had gone through the window. Now when they have problems with each other, they don't go after the gunman. They will go after softer targets, mothers, sisters, aunties, girlfriends, and the whole family sometimes. So this argument about can't catch quack or catch him shot, it happens in truth, another senior sleuth said. 
One of the senior cops who operated in the Gritty St. Catherine North Police Division said in some instance, entire families have had to pack up and leave communities because their relatives had been implicated in shootings. If you don't pack up, you can guarantee that a buckle boom will find them out. And you know what that can mean, said the officer in regards to his St. Catherine experience. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember, subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.